The birth of the solar system was a magnificent event and unfolded 4.6 billion years ago. Picture it, massive swirling clouds of gas and dust colliding and merging to create what scientists call a solar nebula. This nebula began to spin faster and faster, eventually flattening into a magnificent disk. Think of it like a dough stretched and tossed to perfection by a masterful pizziolo. Within this swirling nebula, the majority of its mass began to coalesce and form what we now know as our dazzling sun. Can you believe it? Our sun, this colossal ball of fiery energy, accounts for a staggering 99.8% of the entire solar system's mass. But it didn't hog all the glory. The remaining gas, dust, and debris obediently followed suit, gradually coming together to form the planets and other celestial wonders that dance around our sun. Yet despite our growing knowledge of the cosmos, there remains an intriguing mystery. Despite countless explorations into the abyss of space, we have yet to discover a planetary system that mirrors our own. As if our solar system is one of a kind, a rare gem amidst the vastness of the universe. The implications are both mind-boggling. Consider this. If our solar system is truly unique, it hints at the possibility that we may be the sole witness to its breathtaking beauty. We could be the only civilization fortunate enough to behold its mesmerizing tapestry of planets, moons, and comets. The sheer magnitude of that realization is both exhilarating and humbling. One in a million, or just another one? Throughout history, humans have pondered the mysteries of the universe. And let me tell you, we've come a long way in our quest for answers. Just think about it. We are the lucky ones who know for sure that there are planets of plenty beyond our very own sun. And guess what? Some of them are about the same size as the good old planet Earth. But as with any mind-boggling scientific discovery, the more we learn, the more questions we have. Like seriously, which of these exoplanets out there could possibly be home to some form of life? And how does life even get started? And once it's up and running, how long does it stick around? Now here's the thing. These brainiac scientists like the legendary Carl Sagan used to believe that the universe is chock full of planetary systems just like ours. According to this mind-blowing idea, the solar system is basically a dime a dozen in the grand scheme of things. We're nothing special, my friend. We're just hanging out in a run-of-the-mill spot in the universe. But hold on to your hats, because recent studies have thrown a wrench in this theory. Turns out our solar system might actually be one in a million. So why did these scientists think our humble little system was just like all the others? And what kind of studies have rocked their boat and made them reconsider? Well, my curious person, let me break it down for you. These scientists thought our solar system was just like any other because... Well, they didn't really have much to go on. They had to basically rely on their imagination. Think about this. The first suspected scientific detection of an exoplanet occurred in 1988. The first confirmation of detection came only in 1992 from the Arecibo Observatory, with the discovery of several terrestrial mass planets orbiting a pulsar. This went far beyond anything astronomers could have ever imagined. Everyone embraced the run towards new discoveries of new amazing planetary systems in the universe, and the word exoplanets started appearing in all newspapers around the world. A revolution had started. As of today, thanks to years of dedicated research, we've got a whole host of new information, and trust me, it's mind-blowing stuff. To date, astronomers have discovered more than 3,200 other stars with planets orbiting them. And this is only speaking of our galaxy. There are likely to be many more planetary systems out there waiting to be discovered both in the Milky Way and beyond. Our galaxy is estimated to host about 200 billion stars. That gives scientists plenty of places to hunt for exoplanets or planets outside our solar system. What they discovered so far is that each planet is unique and there are apparently very few planets like Earth. They are actually pretty different than anything we are used to finding in our solar system. The sun itself seems to be pretty different than any other star. The sun's twin. But what exactly are these differences? When it comes to stars, they usually prefer to be in good company. It's like they enjoy a cosmic dance with other stars, orbiting around each other in a beautiful display. 
But our son, well, it's a bit of a loner. It doesn't have a companion to dance with, making it a lonely wolf in the universe. But astronomers don't give up easily. They have been on a quest to find a star that closely resembles our sun. And not just any star, they're searching for what they call a solar twin. These are stars that not only look like the sun but also have similar properties. In 2015, a group of dedicated researchers analyzed a large data set of around 2800 spectra taken from the ELODIE spectrograph archive. They were searching for stars that had spectra closely resembling that of our sun. To determine this, they developed a purely differential method, comparing the fluxes of the star spectrum to a solar reference. To be even more precise, they used 18 spectra of asteroids, the moon, and even the blue sky as references. But it didn't stop there. The researchers dug deeper, determining the atmospheric parameters and differential abundances of eight chemical elements for the potential solar twin candidate. They carefully selected appropriate lines in the spectra to gather this information. They even investigated the LI feature of the stars, which proved additional clues. And finally, they found what seemed to be a perfect match. HIP 076114, also known as HD 138573, emerged as the best twin candidate for our sun. It not only looked like the sun, but also displayed similar properties in terms of absolute magnitude and age. This certainly was an exciting discovery. However, it is a bit discomforting knowing that among a sample of 2,800 stars, only one might have the same properties as our sun. This makes our star a very rare one to find in the universe. In the years to come, this discovery will allow astronomers to study and understand our own sun better, as well as provide insights into how rare our solar system is. It's like finding a long-lost sibling in the vastness of the universe. You better catch up with them. Before moving on, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can improve them for you, the viewer. Plus, don't forget to subscribe to our channel by making sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily videos. The Solar System's Lost Cousin Speaking of the solar system as a whole, the 55 Cancri system is currently the closest known analog to our solar system. Yet there are some crucial differences. Let's delve into the scientific details to understand these disparities. Starting with the stars themselves, both 55 Cancri system and our solar system as stars of similar mass and age. They also share the characteristic of hosting multiple planets. Our solar system boasts eight planets, while 55 Cancri currently holds the record with five known exoplanets. Furthermore, scientists believe that 55 Cancri might have more planets potentially including rocky ones that are currently beyond our detection capabilities. A noteworthy similarity is that all these planets in both systems exhibit nearly circular orbits around their respective stars. However, when it comes to planetary compositions, the differences become evident. The planets in the 55 Cancri system are larger than Earth, making it a souped-up version of our solar system. In fact, 55 Cancri proudly claims the distinction of having more giant planets than our own sun. This discrepancy in planet sizes highlights the diverse possibilities that exist beyond our solar system. The arrangement of the planetary systems is yet another contrasting feature. The inner four planets of 55 Cancri are positioned closer to their star than Earth is to the sun. The closest planet, similar in mass to Uranus, orbits around its star in under three days at a distance of approximately 5.6 million kilometers or 3.5 million miles. The second planet, slightly smaller than Jupiter, completes one orbit every 14.7 days, circling at a distance of approximately 17.9 million kilometers or 11.2 million miles. The third planet, comparable in mass to Saturn, completes an orbit every 44 days at a distance of approximately 35.9 million kilometers. 22.3 million miles. Lastly, the fourth planet, approximately half the mass of Saturn, takes 260 days to complete an orbit around its star, situated about 116.7 million kilometers or 72.5 million miles away. Unluckily, it is not enough for two systems to have stars of similar mass and age, as it is not enough for them to house planets to say that they are very similar. Once again, the solar system seems to be one of a kind. New study It would be really nice, however, to have a mathematical model capable of telling us what is the most likely system to form in the universe. 
This is what a group of scientists thought about. Their novel investigation, primarily utilizing mathematical analysis, was conducted to further explore the field of architecture within star systems. The primary objective of this study was to determine the potential composition and prevalence of star systems in the universe. Understanding the prevalence of different types of star systems is crucial as it has been observed that the positioning and mass of celestial bodies, such as Jupiter in our own solar system, significantly impact the formation and evolution of other components within the system. These intricate dynamics can lead to variations in the frequency and severity of collisions occurring within the system in the first million years from the formation of the planetary system. Notably, the presence of four gaseous giants in the periphery of a star system may provide shielding and bolster protection for the inner parts of the system. Moreover, these gas giants may have played a pivotal role in shaping our planet by influencing collisions that potentially resulted in the presence of water on Earth. Employing an architecturally significant rule, a mathematical model was employed in this study to generate various star system configurations and determine the likelihood and commonality of their occurrence. What they found is that there are three main types of architecture they employed ordered, anti-ordered and mixed architecture. The ordered architecture is proper of the system similar to the solar system. The small, rocky planets are the closest to the sun, and as you move to the outskirts, you find the gas giants. The anti-ordered systems, on the other hand, have the enormous gas giants closest to their star and the smaller, rocky exoplanets orbiting on further orbits. Based on these architectures, it is clear how the mixed ones are made. The biggest surprise came when they discovered that according to their model, the ordered type systems were the least common, namely a star system with an architecture like the one found in the solar system is quite rare to find. According to their computation, this accounted for something like 1% of all systems in the universe. Qualitative Explanation Although the dedicated formation process of the planetary systems is currently not properly understood, and it lacks a fully satisfactory explanation, it is evident that the initial conditions from which a system is formed play a huge role in what will become its final architecture. We already gave a glimpse of how these systems are created. It all starts with a big, extended nebula. The stars born from a nebula then start orbiting around each other. But this system of stars is unstable. After billions of years, most of them end up in binary systems, others in multiple star systems. A few end up as lonely wanderers. The Sun was likely one of them. All of the stars will develop a protoplanetary disk around them, which is composed of the nebula's leftovers, mainly gas and dust. The outcome is the formation of a planetary system. Depending on what the ratio between gas and dust in the protoplanetary disk is, this system might have some gaseous as well as rocky planets, or just one of them, and their position with respect to the main star will vary, according to the initial conditions set by the protoplanetary disk, which is given by the properties of the nebula progenitor. Therefore, scientists think nebulae, and in particular their composition, might play a significant role in determining one planetary system's final architecture, whether mixed, ordered, or anti-ordered. The detailed mechanism that leads to this final organization is not well understood yet. As scientists keep studying how planets form, one thing is certain. The solar system is really one in a million. That's all for this video. What are your thoughts about it? Let us know in the comments below. We'll see you next time on the channel.